Today we'll look at these two covers to see which one is better. This Benball comes in at only about $60 versus the IGAN 10 comes in at about $120. Is it worth the extra money? We'll stick around for a few minutes and let's find out. After taking this out of the box, this is what you'll see is the carry case. Inside of here, you will have some instructions, a little carry bag that has your stakes and rope, and then this just simply unfolds. This is made of a 420D Oxford cloth. This is waterproof, which does open really easy, and then you just have to zip up the bottom. Now, immediately I found where the zipper kind of comes to the corners. This ends up being a little bit problematic as it does grab on its own material, so I could see this being a problem later, but this is what you got. This Benvolt generator tent is equal on all sides and comes with four transparent windows. Each transparent window has a window hook to be able to keep it up in place. This allows you to put it in any orientation. There is also a strap at the top where you can hook this to the generator handle to keep the tent from blowing around as much, and this is also tall enough to suit a lot of different style of suitcase generators. It'll also come with about 12 feet of paracord along with four stakes. This also comes with some instructions to show you how to open it up, place the generator in, and also also how to store a backup which I'll show you how that works now. Now the proper way is you would have a generator already in here and this part would actually be unzipped and I'll show you that in a minute but this just simply folds in half and I will admit this is my second time doing it because the first time well I almost threw it. You have to take the two circles and try to overlap them in order to get this to completely fold but once you kind of figure it out like right here there's one circle now you have two you can now try to place this into the bag and I did say try because this is actually a little bit more challenging even though in the video it might look look halfway easy, you have to keep it folded or else it will just pop right open. This took me almost two minutes after I forgot to place the stakes and the rope into the actual carry sack, but now you can see once it's in there, this is what it'll look like, and I will admit this carry bag probably won't last long as that zipper will probably rip. The IGAN comes in a box which will need a little bit of assembly. After pulling this out, you can already tell the materials definitely look a little bit more quality, but it is double the price. Even the instructions look better, and as soon as you grab the material, you can already tell the quality of it is much better. We'll get this assembled. I'll show you what it looks like. I verified all the pieces are here so we'll start. Now I did speed this up about triple time as there is only two long legs, there's only two short legs, and four posts that you have to put them in. So this is actually a really easy assembly and it's almost self-explanatory. It's, it's kind of like a mini tent. You have the two main poles. Each one gets a stick on the outside of the middle pole and then you just simply put them into both corners and then this creates the frame of your tent. You'll then take the cover, go ahead and open this up, and then slide it over the frame. Now I will admit this was a little bit stiff as the material is new, which I assume this will stretch out a little bit, but once it's on there, it's actually pretty easy and it does look pretty good. There is one more step is that inside there is actually a strap on each corner where you just take the Velcro and then latch it together on all four positions, and now this is what you have. Now immediately, I already like the functionality of this better with two clips and then the front panel just opens up. This allows allows quick, easy access. When you take a look inside here, you'll notice there is plenty of room and it's formed well. There's even a pouch on the side. This is actually meant for keeping your stakes and rope, along with a travel bag that does come with it. On top of the generator tent, there is one access panel that opens up. This allows you to be able to refuel the generator without having to lift the tent off. This is actually a nice access panel. Along with the side panel, this is where you would be able to come and start the generator. And at the rear of the tent, there's a molded cover that overhangs the exhaust outlet. This is so the water does not drip back onto itself and inside to where the generator will get wet. I will run you through the disassembly as this does take just a little bit of time and again I did speed this up just so you can see but all four corners get unstrapped then you'll take off the tent cover. Go ahead and set this to the side. Now the molded exhaust cover is going to give you a little bit of a problem in a minute at least that I found. Go ahead and take off the tent stakes and undo all four poles along with the legs. Undo the tent frame and now we can start placing this inside of the carry bag which I did leave inside the cover. Now this is where you'll see it becomes a problem in a minute. Placing all the poles inside the bag is not really the issue, but what is the issue is the molded exhaust cover. Being that it does kind of hold a form, this doesn't allow the bag to close very well. I didn't want to fold it over on itself as I afraid it might actually damage the molded form, so I did kind of place this upright and then fold it over a little bit, which did allow me to close it and hopefully not bending the exhaust cover. 
While looking at both of these side by side, the Ben Ball does have a slightly larger displacement as it does take up more room. The iGAN is sleeker as it is skinnier but a little bit longer. But how do these compare when you have a couple generators inside? I just happen to have two Hondas that are exactly identical, so we'll use these as an example and I'll give you some other ones at the end. The iGAN is simple to set up once it's already assembled as you just place it on top versus the Ben Ball. You will have to open up the bottom. I decided to try something different and stick it in through one of the access windows. I quickly realized this actually wasn't a great idea as the generator is a little bit too big. A smaller generator you probably could have done this but after struggling with this for a few seconds I realized this was a great way to hurt your back. Now if you follow the instructions the proper way to do this is to have both sides unfolded and then lay the black bottom piece out to place the generator on top of. Then you slide the cover on top and go ahead and zip the bottom up. And again this is where I started to find problems with the zipper and the material as it would catch especially on the corners and sometimes even the middle here is shown as it would continue to catch and drag so care should be taken when utilizing this zipper as again I could see this becoming a problem later on. Now when looking at both of these tents it looks like they were specifically designed for the Hondas. One thing you notice is that if you had to position the generator to a different location, the iGAN is a lot quicker. When it comes to refueling your generator, there's a panel up top connecting cords or accessing the front. There's a separate panel as well. And for starting it, there's another panel and all of these are quick and easy to use. And the molded rear exhaust cover directs water away from the generator and away from getting inside. The Benval having four equal sides, you'll just choose whatever is going to be the front or the back. Now one thing on the exhaust side is you have to roll this up all the way and hook it into place as there is no way to really put it halfway into position. This leaves the generator kind of sticking out in access to the weather. Not that it's a bad thing but some generators actually don't perform well when getting wet so this could allow water to get trapped inside which you may want the zipper on the bottom to be partially unzipped so water can continue to drain out. You can also strap this around the handle to keep it from moving or blowing around so much but there is no way to quickly pick this up and move it as you would have to deform this quite a bit. Now you could move this towards the front. This will give you a little bit more room in the back and you could put the panel down about halfway. This gives you some clearance at least from getting directly rained on. Now when it comes to starting up the generator, I had one panel open in the front and the one on the side along with the one in the back open. Now I wanted to see if carbon monoxide was going to be an issue if it would kind of flow back in. So I will close this up as much as possible and check on it periodically, but this is kind of what it looks like while running. When it does come to the iGAN, I will admit, just the functionality of the front panel and the side panel are very easy to use. This makes it a lot quicker and easier just to get it started. But I found there wasn't a lot of room to actually reach the handle to turn it into the on position or pull the starter. But because it's light and I can just move it real quick, well then it allowed me to get that room I needed to start it up. Now because the iGAN sits up off the ground, this allows direct air intake from right underneath the front and this allows it to hit those vent intakes. This goes right onto the inverter board so your air kind of comes right in from the front, goes in through the generator and then right out the back and this is where you would place your cords. So everything you can actually reach really easy just by simply pulling this out a little bit, plugging in your cords, turning it off and on of eco and as you can see the back has plenty of room to exhaust and that cover deflects any water that could be coming in no matter if it is raining really hard or sideways so this should do really good on our rain test in a little while. And if you happen to need to reposition the generator, the iGAN is a lot simpler as you just pick it up, put the generator into the spot you need to, and then put the cover right back on. And if it does happen to be very windy, you do have these tie down eyelets. Now when it does come to repositioning while utilizing the bend ball cover, I decided to try again and just see if I could slip it out of the front real quick. And again, this proved to not be the best way to do it, as this again will hurt your back. So I decided just to do it the way that it says, but it does take a little bit longer and I did run into those problems again with the zippers, especially at the corners they would consistently catch. And I did this several times just to make sure it wasn't me, but it seemed like every time I got to a corner it would like to catch, but this is how you would go ahead and move the generator is simply take it out then go ahead and reposition it and then put it back into position and rezip it up. Now if you are curious like me I was wondering if this would actually dampen the sound so have a listen. Now it is windy so I am getting some peaks on the meter but with me standing there 
To me, it sounds like the IGN 10 did dampen the sound if you are right next to it. So have one more listen. Now, being that it was windy out, this is where I found a problem with the Benvolt, is that trying to set this up under windy conditions kind of seemed like it might be a little bit of a problem as it did want to fold in on itself. So I decided instead of setting the generator on it, I just put it right over it and now have a listen. Now that the storm has finally showed up, we can see what it looks like while it is raining. Again, the back of this one is definitely getting wet as the wind blows and the water is coming and going, and it is starting to pool on the inside. Now I do have this fully zipped up, but as you can see, the back of the generator is definitely getting wet, and there is water that is getting on the inside of the cover. Now as we take a look at the eye again, even under these rainy conditions with the wind blowing everywhere, this is doing an excellent job of keeping the generator completely dry. It doesn't look like the back cover on the generator is wet at all. I already looked at the front of the generator. This is completely dry and doing an excellent job of what it should be doing. Now, if you're wondering what it looks like to put it away, the IGAN is definitely nice because you can, again, flip over the panel, just turn the generator off, pick up the cover, pick up your generator, and walk away and maybe put the cover away somewhere dry. When it comes to the bend ball, you will have the side panel that this does allow to easily get in into place, but I was definitely determined to take the generator out again of one of the pockets. Now, this again was not the best idea because I could already feel my back just straining, and I was determined to try it this way. If I had a smaller generator, this would have worked really easy, like a Honda EU1000 would have been great. Now you can see there is a little bit of water that did pull up inside, so I suggest leaving the zippers maybe slightly undone, that way the water can drain out. But when it comes to packing this up, if you just unzip it and those corners again don't catch, this simply just folds up and this makes it really quick to store, So and it takes up very little space. Now if you are wondering about other size generators, like the Honda EU3200i is actually quite a bit bigger and this does stick out quite a bit more, so it's not really ideal for the Benval. When it comes to utilizing it with the IGAN, surprisingly, it actually fit really well. You could still get to the front fueling, the side compartment allowed to easily get to the starter rope, and it had plenty of protection from the elements with the exhaust overhang. If you were using the EcoFlow Smart Generator, the Benvolt tent definitely doesn't fit, again because it will be sticking out the back quite a bit, allowing the electronics of this one maybe to get wet. So the IGAN, I surprisingly tried it and it did fit. It was actually a little bit tall, but it was on the ground flat. It allowed you to get to the front compartment easy to hook up any kind of cords, and you could also get to the fueling if you needed to, along with propane hookups starting and more. This also allowed for plenty of protection on the back exhaust cover, so I think the IGAN is a great fit. Now when it comes to other generators like the Max Peating Rods, these suitcase generators are pretty popular size. Again, it did stick out a little bit with the Benvol, but the IGAN fit perfectly. The EFI from Gen Max, this did stick out a little bit, and it is a little bit taller, but again, the IGAN fit it very well. So the IGAN does fit plenty of models. Now when it comes to the bend ball, I will admit this one actually folds up quickly. You can just fold it, put it away, it doesn't take up very much room versus this one does take a little bit more effort as far as packing it up or setting it up. Now my suggestion is if you only use your generator once in a while and it's only going to be a rare thing, then this bend ball at only about $60 might just do the trick. I don't think this is going to last very long with the zippers and such. You might get three, four years out of it at best versus the IGAN. This one here is probably going to last maybe 15 to 20 years depending on how you treat it. So if you want to spend $120, have something that's real nice, very functional, and is definitely quality built, my money's on the IGAN. This is the one that I would get as it does fit a lot more of the generators out there that are longer, just as I showed you earlier. So I hope you guys liked the video. Links are down in the description. I hope to see you next time.